humans have made mistakes we eventually learned how to fly but not how to avoid making mistakes pilot usually intend to fly safely but they sometimes make errors it has been observed that the majority of fatal crashes are attributed to decision errors rather than to perceptual or execution errors so we need to learn how can we minimize the mistakes as we make as pilots and what are some of the warning signs that may lead to an error flying i technology aircraft require a real time decision making which involving situational awareness choice amongst alternatives and assessment of risk within a limited time frame aviation is a complex safety critical endeavor many decisions made while flying can affect the lives of hundreds of people and have extraordinary economic consequences thus even though some flight decisions are not strongly related to safety it is best to view aviation decision making as a safety critical function research into the human factors related to aircraft accidents and incidents has highlighted decision making as a crucial element statistics show that up to 80% of all aviation accidents are attributed to human error the most dangerous times include take off and landing and the time periods before and after these events pilot error account for 53% of aircraft accidents with mechanical failure constitutes 21% and weather conditions account for 11% of fatal accidents to fly an airplane safely you need three sets of separate but related skills aircraft control the ability to fly the actual aircraft aviation knowledge knowledge of systems procedures regulations and last but not the least aeronautical decision making the ability to make correct decisions in a given circumstances it is important to note here that these three aspects are interdependent but to be a successful pilot you should have command over all these three skills aeronautical decision making is defined by faa as a systematic approach to the mental process which is used by aircraft pilots for the purpose to consistently determine the best course of action in response to a given set of circumstances and here pilot judgment is defined as the mental process that pilots use in making decision decision making models play a hugely important part in identifying a problem and finding the most safest appropriate and expeditious resolve three models for problem solving and decision making are 5p 3p and the decide model a pilot is responsible for responding to many situations and making the appropriate decisions as a result these decisions will account for any hazards that have been identified ensuring that all risks are handled the 5p model refers to five possible challenges and opportunities that the pilot will be confronted with during the flight the plan the plane the pilot the passenger and the programming make up the 5p model each of these area consist of a set of challenges and opportunities that every pilot encounters which can substantially impact the pilot's ability to make informed 
and timely decisions. The plan, occasionally referred to as the mission, it covers all aspects of pre-flight planning, route, weather and fuel requirements. External factors such as weather and aircraft status are subject to change at any time. Regularly checking it through the, throughout the journey will ensure that it is updated accordingly. Second P in 5P model is plane. Ensure that plane is airworthy. For example, ensuring that the relevant maintenance has been carried out and the plane has all of the equipment that may be needed during the flight. The pilot must be prepared for flight. Before takeoff, pilots are advised to refer to the I am safe checklist, which will evaluate whether they are fit to fly. Pilots will also need to conduct a pre-flight health assessment before boarding the plane. The specification of the I am safe checklist states the following illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, emotion. Not only are the pilots responsible for navigating the aircraft, but they are faced with many risks too. Often they will travel at high altitudes and a regularly changing flight schedule mean that many experience some level of fatigue. For example, cold symptoms can give rise to mental lethargy, which will result in impaired decision making, judgment and flying abilities. As we know, the commander of the aircraft is the ultimately responsible for any decisions made in the cockpit. We should understand that the best judgment comes with skills, which is learned or practiced with discipline and individual ability to make right decisions quickly. Some passengers will have external requirements such as feeling of anxiety towards flying or a need to reach their destination. Many of these factors can become dangerous distractions and many passengers are unaware of the risk associated with flying. On some occasions, passengers can be given factual description of the risk present. Passengers are involved in the decision making and given tasks and duties to keep them busy and involved. The fifth element is programming. The electronic instrument displays, global positioning systems and autopilot has reduced pilot workload and increased the pilot situation awareness. Pilot should be fully aware of the functionality of automation. Nowadays, pilots dedicate a lot of time and attention to these equipments during the flight and this presents the risk of this technology becoming a serious distraction. Pilots should adopt a balanced approach and they should pay equal attention to other work like gathering of information related to airport or in route weather types of approaches and so on. The FAA defines a 3P model for implementing effective aeronautical decision making. First step in the 3P model perceived is about developing a clear and comprehensive awareness of your particular situation. The PAVE checklist is a great way to evaluate your personal minimums and hazards you could experience when flying. Each letter stands for a different risk when flying. Personal, aircraft, environment and external pressure. So first is pilot. Just as an aircraft must be deemed safe and airworthy prior to each flight, all pilots must take the necessary steps to determine if they are fit to fly. The personal 
can be evaluated by using acronym called I am safe. The I am safe checklist is a personal health assessment which is used to ensure the pilot is healthy before each flight. The latter stands for I for illness, M for medication, S for stress, A for alcohol, F for fatigue, E for emotions. By reviewing these elements of the checklist, the pilot can conclude whether he or she is personally fit to fly. After completing the personal evaluation, it is important to recognize the aircraft limitations and decide if the plane is right for the flight. The aircraft must be deemed airworthy, have the proper equipment, meet the fuel and performance requirements for the flight, and the pilot must be comfortable and experienced enough to safely operate the aircraft. External pressures can be hard to evaluate. External factors are the factors which are outside of the normal planned flight that may cause pressure on the pilot to complete the flight. For example, to meet the on-time performance of company can push a pilot into making risky decisions. It is important to recognize these pressures and take appropriate actions to avoid putting yourself and your passengers in a potentially dangerous situation. The fourth element of perceived PAVE checklist is environment. The outside environment is a major factor that could impact your flight. For example, weather, airport, airspace conditions, geography of the land, so these things pilots have to take consider before taking each flight. The second P element of 3P model is process care checklist. So here evaluate with care. Next, you mentally process information about the circumstances that you have identified. The goal is to evaluate the impact on the safety of your flight and consider why I should care about these circumstances. For each hazard that you perceived in step one, process with care. Consequences. Analyze aftermath. What will be the consequence if fly under stress, fatigue or pressure? Alternatives. Should I wait for weather improvement? Or otherwise, if I am feeling stress, should we reschedule the flights? So this will help to process the information. Next is reality. This is the danger and destruction of fatigue, which as a pilot, I should be aware because these will lead to an accident. External pressure. As a pilot, are you feeling pressurized to meet certain deadlines? Third element of 3P model is perform. Here we will uh, use team checklist. T stands for transfer. So we have to ask ourselves that should any decisions be deferred to someone else? Thereafter, E stands for eliminate. Can the hazard be eliminated? A stands for accept. Can you reasonably accept the risk? And the last is mitigate. Can the risk be mitigated? So the 3P model allows pilots to improve their aeronautical decision making skills by applying a risk management processing in any of the three framework to any given circumstances. Decide model. It is the six step process. It is one another type of continuous loop process that provides the pilot with a logical way of making decisions. If a pilot continually use the decide model in all decision making, it becomes natural and results in better decisions under all type of situations. In conventional decision making, the need for a decision triggers when the recognition that something has changed or an expected change did not occur. Recognition of the change or lack of change is a vital step in any decision making process.
not noticing changes in a situation can lead directly to a mishap. First step is to detect the problem. Thereafter, after identifying the problem, the pilot must evaluate the need to react to it and determine the actions necessary to resolve the situation in the time available. Then choose a course of action after identifying the problem and its impact have been estimated. Thereafter, the pilot formulates a plan that will take him or her to the objective, like identifying the solutions. Thereafter, do the necessary action or develop a plan of action. Once you have identified the pathways to resolution, the pilot select the most suitable one for the situation. And the last element of decide model is evaluate the solution. So after implementing a solution, evaluate that the decision to see it, it was correct. It is essential to think ahead and determine how the decision could affect other phases of flight. Now here we will be going to discuss about the biases error in decision making. So pilot mistakes are often called pilot error and these are defined as an action or inaction that leads to a deviation from the intentions and expectations. The FA outlines five hazardous attitudes that can compromise a pilot's decision making capability. Anti-authority, impulsivity, invulnerability, macho, and resignation. Hazardous attitudes can lead to poor decision making and actions that involve unnecessary risk. The pilot must examine decisions carefully to ensure that the choice have not been influenced by the hazardous attitudes and be familiar with positive alternatives to the counteract the hazardous attitudes. These substitute attitudes which are the counteract. So first hazardous attitude is anti-authority don't tell me type. Pilot with an anti-authority attitude tend to believe that rules, regulations and safety procedures don't apply to them. Impulsively do something quickly. According to FA, an attitude of impulsivity is found in pilots who feel the need to do something, anything immediately. Invulnerability, it won't happen to me. Many people, not just pilots, fall into a pattern of thinking that accidents happen to others but never to them. This attitude of Invulnerability can become a safety concern when pilots fail to consider the risk of their actions. Macho, I can do it. Pilot with a macho attitude are always trying to impress others and prove themselves by taking unnecessary risk. Both men and women are susceptible to a macho attitude, which leads to foolish and often dangerous behavior. While pilots must have a high level of confidence in their abilities, it is important to avoid becoming overconfident and adopting a macho attitude. Resignation. What is the use? Finally, pilots with an attitude of resignation lack the confidence and conviction to believe that they can make a difference in what happens to them. These pilots tend to give up easily when faced with challenges and don't take criticism well. Steps to improve decision making. The first step is standard operating procedures, which we are aware are SOP. Steps to improve decision making. The first step is SOP, standard operating procedures. Standard operating procedures are widely used throughout the commercial aviation community as a means to manage risk. Establishing safety-oriented SOPs will provide pilots with pre-planned responses that manage the risk and break the chain of events leading to accidents. To be effective, SOPs must be clear, 
concise and free of conflict. Use of SOPs is a form of rule based behavior and is less error prone than knowledge based behavior. Pre flight planning. Planning conducted prior to a flight in a low stress environment can enable a pilot to produce a safety strategy for the flight. Collaborative decision making with air traffic controller, weather services, and other pilots will help to size up a general situation. Good pre flight planning also reduces the workload once airborne. Safety net. Research has suggested that having a plan B safety net encourages continuation and possibly more risky behavior. Naturally, it is indeed easier to take a risk when you know that you can count on a plan B. Pilots, however, rarely assess their plan B properly. So the protection can be weaker than expected. Single pilot crew resource management training SRM single pilot crew resource management is a practical way to teach pilot better decision making and judgment strategies. SRM is the capacity to manage all resources available to the single pilot prior to and during the flight to ensure a safe flight. Threat and error management training can be referred to a form of defensive flying for pilots. The objective of threat and error management is to eliminate or reduce the risk identified from threats and errors to ensure a safe flight. Simulation training. Simulations can allow training decisions making in high stress, high workload situations with poor or conflicting information. Training scenarios can be tailored to the trainee's need. In addition, simulators allow exploration of the consequences of poor decisions without endangering the safety of the aircraft and its occupants. Decision making training. Trainers should emphasize the importance of maintaining situation awareness of prioritizing responses to undesired aircraft states. Then the next step is decision making aids. Decision making aids are easy to remember list which are used to support the decision maker and to avoid errors. Beneficials in the case of critical and stressful situation. Examples of decision making. Decisions to be taken in order to avoid an accident or to limit the consequences. Decision to execute a go around in adverse weather condition. Decision to execute a landing procedure as a precaution outside any aerodrome boundaries. Decision to execute landings on an unexpected surface such as secondary runway, grass surface. Decisions to reject a takeoff before or after starting the takeoff roll or to continue the takeoff. So, no matter how hard we try, it is simply not possible for human beings to avoid errors entirely. By using a systematic approach to continuous aeronautical decision making, however, and developing awareness of common types of human aeronautical decision making error, we can seek to minimize mistakes.